Well, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome to another edition of God Honest Truth live stream. <clears throat> we are coming to you live from Western North Carolina. We are God Honest Truth, and we are a Messianic ministry. You can find out more about us at GodHonestTruth.com. And like always, if you need to contact us, you can do so through any of our numerous multi, uh, social media profiles, or better yet, contact us directly through email at team at GodHonestTruth.com. Now, right now, you're probably understanding me all right. And sometimes we throw in a little bit of Hebrew here and there, and maybe some other words like Greek and whatnot, depending on the context and what we need it for. These are all different languages. And even though we don't know lots and lots of languages, we know there are lots and lots of languages out there. And sometimes the Holy Spirit gives us the gift and ability to speak languages that we do not know. Find out more about that in tonight's drosh, because tonight's drosh is going to be all about speaking in tongues. So stay tuned for that. But before we get to tonight's drosh, we're going to be doing our liturgy and our Torah portion, our Brit Hadashah portion, and our half Torah portion. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive into our liturgy. Bold Baleva Panima Nefeshahudi Omiya Ufate Misra Kadima Ayin Lazion Zofia Old Low of the Tikvate Nu Ah, tik babash no tal paim. Lahi yo tam koshi. Behart se nu. Eret zion verusha lahim. Lahi yo tam koshi. Behart se nu. Eret Zion Verushalayim Shema Israel Yahweh Eloheinu Yahweh Echad Baruch Shem Kivod Malhuto Le'olam v'ayin. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. 
Blessed be his name, whose glorious kingdom is for eternity. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And have these words which I command you this day be upon your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children, and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and let them be frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and upon your gates. All right, so in the way of announcements this week, we'd like to remind everyone that we are doing an audio podcast now. And you can find us on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, lots of different ones. If you would like to find out more about that, go to our website, GodHonestTruth.com. Mm, excuse me. And under the Our Ministry menu, click on Connect Socially, and you'll find the links for all the audio podcasts as well as the links for the video platforms and the social media platforms as well, including at the very bottom also is our donation page if you would like to help support us financially. Now, as always... Here's the list of upcoming episodes for about the next two months or so. Like we said, tonight, tonight's drosh is going to be on speaking in tongues. Next week, we're going to be doing a drosh on basic financial management. So be sure to stay tuned for that. And then be sure to stay tuned for all the upcoming episodes that you can see on your screen right now. Here is your list of events for the next upcoming year as far as feast days go. And our next upcoming feast day is going to be Yom Teruah or Rosh Hashanah, whichever way you want to call it. And that starts on sunset of September 25th and runs through sunset of September 27th. So now you got the dates and you know when it's coming up so you can be prepared. Now, like always, we will be doing a drosh about the feast day about two weeks before the feast day actually occurs. So with Yom Teruah, stay tuned for the drosh on Yom Teruah about two weeks prior to September 25th. And as always, please keep these this list of people and places in your prayer list because we know that Scripture tells us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We also know that the entire nation of Israel needs our prayers, being geographically located where they are with all the countries around them that want to cause them harm and utterly annihilate them. So they need our prayers as well as the government of Israel. And of course, whatever country you're in, pray for the people and the government of your country also. And like always, please keep law enforcement, fire department, frontline responders, medical, EMS, what have you. Keep them in your prayers and their extended friends and family also because we know it affects them just like it does the people in the job itself. And as always, if you have any prayer requests or announcements that you would like to have announced live on air, make sure to have that in to us by Thursday evening at the latest, because we do go live on Friday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So with all that being covered, let's get back to our liturgy. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, who has given us the way of salvation in Messiah Yeshua. He walked among us, filled with your Spirit. The only one who ever perfectly fulfilled your Torah. He healed the sick and raised the dead. The multitudes of our people sought his touch. He taught as no man taught. With authority he brought forth the treasures of the Torah. How the children sought him, the lepers he touched and made clean. How the despised and outcast found love and release from their sin. How the hypocrites feared him, whose words uncovered their sin, despised and rejected, acquainted with grief, he bore the sins of Israel. All we, like sheep, have gone astray, turned every one to his own way. Our iniquities were laid upon the king, the sins of the world, his burden to bear. He rose from the dead and opened the way to life everlasting. Praise his name. We are in him. His spirit empowers. New life is ours with joy and peace. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, who has given us Messiah our King. For the sake of our Master Yeshua, in his merit and virtues, may the sayings of my mouth and a meditation of my heart 
Be favorable before you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Avinu Sheba Shemaim Yikadesh Shimcha Tabo Mehutecha Yesa Retzonecha Baaretz Kaasher Naasa Vashemaim Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let thy kingdom come, let thy will be done, as on earth, so as in heaven. Ten Lanu Hayom, Lechem Hukenu Usalach Lanu Erashmatenu ka asher. So lechim anachnu la asher ashmulanu. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Ve'al tevienu li de masa, ki im hatzilenu min hara. Ki laha, hamam laha, v'hagavura, v'hatifaret, le'olame, olamim. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. None can compare to you, O Lord, and nothing compares to your creation. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your mercy endures throughout all generations. The Lord is King, the Lord was King, the Lord shall be King throughout all time. May the Lord grant His people mercy, may the Lord bless His people with peace. Proclaim the Lord's greatness with me, let us exalt Him together. And it came to pass, whenever the ark went forth, Moses would say, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. May those who hate you flee from before you. For from Zion shall go forth the Torah, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Blessed be he who in holiness gave the Torah to his people Israel. All right, and tonight's Torah portion is going to be Genesis chapter 42, verse 18, through chapter 43, verse 23. And like always, we'll give you just a moment to find that in your preferred translation at home. Genesis chapter 42, verse 18. Now Yosef said to them the third day, Do this and live, for I fear Elohim. If you are trustworthy, let one of your brothers be confined to your prison house, and you go bring grain for the scarcity of food of your houses. And bring your youngest brother to me, and let your words be confirmed, and you do not die. And so they did. And they said to each other, Truly, we are guilty concerning our brother, for we saw the distress of his life when he pleaded with us, yet we did not listen. That is why this distress has come upon us. And Reuben answered them, saying, Did I not speak to you, saying, Do not sin against the boy? And you would not listen? And see, his blood is now required of us. And they did not know that Yosef understood them, for he spoke to them through an interpreter. And he turned himself away from them and wept, but came back to them and spoke to them. And he took Shimon from them and bound him before their eyes. And Yosef commanded, and they filled their sacks with grain, also to put back every man's silver to his, <clears throat> to his sack, and to give them food for the journey. And thus it was done for them. So they loaded their donkeys with the grain and went from there. And as one of them opened his sack to give his donkey fodder at the lodging place, he saw his silver, for there it was in the mouth of his sack. And he said to his brothers, My silver has been returned, and there it is in my sack. And their hearts sank, and they were afraid, saying to each other, What is this that Elohim has done to us? So they came to Jacob their father in the land of Canaan, and reported to him all that befell them, saying, The man, the master of the land, spoke to us harshly, and took us for spies of the land. But we said to him, We are trustworthy, we are not spies. We are twelve brothers, sons of our father. One is no more, and the youngest is today with our father in the land of Canaan. 
And the man, the master of the land, said to us, By this I know that you are trustworthy. Leave one of your brothers here with me, and take food for the scarcity of food of your household, and go. And bring your youngest brother to me. Then I know that you are not spies, but that you are trustworthy. I give your brother to you, and you move about in the land. And it came to be, as they emptied their sacks, that, look, the bundle of each man's silver was in his sack. And when they and their father saw the bundles of silver, they were afraid. And Jacob their father said to them, You have bereaved me. Yosef is no more, and Shimon is no more. And you would take Benjamin? All this is against me. So Reuben spoke to his father, saying, Take the lives of my two sons, if I do not bring him back to you. Put him in my hands, and I myself bring him back to you. But he said, My son is not going down with you, for his brother is dead, and he is left alone. If any harm should come to him along the way in which you go, then you would bring down my gray hair with sorrow to Sheol. But the scarcity of food was severe in the land, and it came to be when they had eaten up the grain which they had brought from Mitzrayim, that their father said to them, Go back, buy us a little food. But Judah said, spoke to him, saying, The man vehemently warned us, saying, You do not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you let our brother go with us, we go down and buy you food. But if you do not let him go, we do not go down, because the man said to us, You do not see my face unless your brother is with you. And Yisrael said, why did you do evil to me to inform the man that you still had another brother? And they said, The man kept asking about us and our relatives, saying, Is your father still alive? Have you another brother? And we informed him according to these words. How could we know that he would say, Bring your brother down? And Judah said to Israel his father, Send the boy with me, and let us arise and go, and live and not die, both we and you and also our little ones. I myself shall stand guarantee for him. From my hand you are to require him. If I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, then let me bear the blame forever. For if we had not delayed, truly by now we could have returned this second time. And their father Yisrael said to them, If so, then do this. Take some of the best fruit of the land in your vessels and bring a present down for the man, a little balm and a little honey, spices and myrrh, nuts and almonds, and take double silver in your hand, and take back in your hand the silver that was returned in the mouth of your sacks. It could have been a mistake. And take your brother and arise, go back to the man. And El Shaddai give to you compassion before the man, so that he shall release your other brother and Benjamin. And I, if I am bereaved, I am bereaved. And the men took that present and Benjamin, and they took double the amount of silver in their hand, and arose and went down to Mitzrayim, and stood before Yosef. And Yosef saw Benjamin with them, and said to the one over his house, Bring the men home, and make a great slaughter, and prepare, for these men are to eat with me at noon. And the man did as Yosef said, and the man brought the men into Yosef's house. And the men were afraid, because they were brought into Yosef's house. And they said, it is because of the silver which was put back into our sacks the first time that we are brought in to throw himself upon us and fall upon us to take us as slaves, our donkeys too. So they came near to the man over the house of Yosef and spoke to him at the door of the house and said, O oh my master, we indeed came down the first time to buy food, but it came to be when we came to the lodging place that we opened our sacks and each man, th I'm sorry, our sacks and each and saw each man's silver in the ma mouth of his sack, our silver in its weight, and we have brought it back in our hand, and we have brought down other silver in our hands to buy food. We do not know who put our silver in our sacks, but he said, Peace be with you, do not be afraid. Your Elohim and the Elohim of your father has given you treasure in your sacks. Your silver had come to me, and he brought Shimon out to them. Baruch atah Yahweh, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu Torah temet, bechaye olam betukenu, Baruch atah Yahweh, noten ha Torah. Amen. This is the Torah which Moses placed before the children of Israel. 
It is in accord with the Lord's command by the hand of Moses. It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it, and those who support it are praiseworthy. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Bring us back, Lord, to you, and we shall come. Renew our days as of old. Et ha'im hi, lama ha'zim kimba, ve'tomehe ha me'ushar. Derahe ha, darhe noam, veho nativote ha, chalom. Ashivenu adonai, ele ha ve nashuva. Hades, hades amenu. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has chosen faithful prophets to speak words of truth. Amen. Right, and tonight's Haftorah portion is going to be Isaiah chapter 50, verse 10 through chapter 52, verse 11. And like always, we'll give you just a moment to find that in your preferred translation at home. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 10. Who among you is fearing Yahweh, obeying the voice of his servant that has walked in darkness and has no light? Let him trust in the name of Yahweh and lean upon his Elohim. See, all you who light a fire girding on burning arrows, walk in the light of your fire and in the burning arrows you have lit. From my hand you shall have this, you shall lie down in grief. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, seeking Yahweh. Look to the rock you were hewn from and to the hole of the pit you were dug from. Look to Abraham your father and to Sarah who bore you. For he was alone when I called him and I blessed him and increased him. For Yahweh shall comfort Zion. He shall comfort all her waste places. For he makes her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of Yahweh. Joy and gladness are found in it thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give ear to me, O my nation, for the Torah goes forth from me, and my right ruling I set as a light to the peoples. My righteousness is near, my deliverance shall go forth, and my arms judge peoples. Coastlands wait upon me, and for my arm they wait expectantly. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look on the earth beneath, for the heavens shall vanish like smoke, and the earth wear out like a garment, and those who dwell in it die as gnats. But my deliverance is forever, and my righteousness is not broken. Listen to me, you who know righteousness, a people in whose heart is my Torah. Do not fear the reproach of men, nor be, nor be afraid of their revelings. For a moth eats them like a garment, and a worm eats them like wool. But my righteousness is forever, and my deliverance to all generations. Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of Yahweh. Awake as in days of old, everlasting generations. Was it not you who cut Rahab apart and pierced the crocodile? Was it not you who dried up the sea, the waters of the great deep, who made the depths of the sea a way for the redeemed to pass over? And let the ransomed of Yahweh return. And they shall come to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads. Let them attain joy and gladness. Sorrow and sighing shall flee away. I, I am he who comforts you. Who are you that you should be afraid of man that dies, and of the son of man who is made like grass? And you have forgotten Yahweh your maker, who stretched out the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth, and you continually fear all the day because of the rage of the oppressor, as he has prepared to destroy. 
and where is the rage of the oppressor? Fouled, he hastens to be loosened, that he should not die in the pit, and that his bread should not fail. But I am Yahweh your Elohim, stirring up the sea, and its waves roar. Yahweh of hosts is his name. And I have put my words in your mouth, and with the shadow of my hand I have covered you, to plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth, and to say to Zion, You are my people. Awake, awake yourself. Rise up, O Jerusalem, you who have drunk at the hand of Yahweh the cup of his wrath. You have drunk the dregs of the cup of reeling, and drained it out. Of all the sons she bore, she has none to guide her, and of all the sons she has brought up, none is strengthening her hand. Both these are coming up on you, who is sorry for you? Ruin and destruction, scarcity of food and sword. How shall I comfort you? Your sons have fainted, they lie at the head of all the streets like a gazelle in a net. They are filled with the wrath of Yahweh, the rebuke of your Elohim. Therefore, please hear this, you afflicted and drunk, but not with wine. Thus said your master Yahweh and your Elohim, who pleads the cause of his people. See, I shall take out of your hand the cup of my reeling, the dregs of the cup of my wrath. Never again shall you drink it. And I shall put it into the hand of those who afflict you, who have said to your being, Bow down, and we pass over you. And you made your back like the ground, and as the street, to walk over. Awake, awake, put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your garments of splendor, O Jerusalem, the set-apart city. For no more do the uncircumcised and the unclean come into you. Shake yourself from the dust, arise, and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose yourself from the bonds of your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus said Yahweh, You have been sold for naught, and you are redeemed not with silver. For thus said the master Yahweh, At first my people went down into Mitzrayim to sojourn there, and I sure oppressed them without cause. And now what have I here, declares Yahweh, that my people are taken away for naught? Those who rule over them make them wail, declares Yahweh and my name is despised all day continually. Therefore my people shall know my name in that day, for I am the one who is speaking. See, it is I. How pleasant upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, oh. who proclaims deliverance, who says to Zion, your Elohim reigns, the voice of your watchmen. They shall lift up their voices, together they shout for joy, because eye to eye they see the return of Yahweh to Zion. Break forth into joy, sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem, for Yahweh shall comfort his people, he shall redeem Jerusalem. Yahweh shall lay bare his set-apart arm in the eyes of all the nations. Oh, excuse me. And all the ends of the earth shall see the deliverance of our Elohim. Turn aside, turn aside, come out from there, touch not the unclean. Come out of her midst, be clean, you who bear the vessels of Yahweh. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe who has given us the living word in Messiah Yeshua. Blessed are you, O Lord, <clears throat> giver of the renewed covenant. Amen. All right, and our Brit Hadashah portion for today is going to be Revelation chapter 21, verse 9 through verse 27. And once again, we'll give you just a moment to find that in your preferred translation at home. Revelation chapter 21, verse 9. <clears throat> and one of the seven messengers who held the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and spoke with me, saying, Come, I shall show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the set-apart Jerusalem, descending out of the heaven from Elohim, 
having the esteem of Elohim, and her light was like a, pre a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and having a great and high wall, having twelve gates, and at the gates twelve messengers, and names written on them, which are those of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve emissaries of the Lamb. And he spoke with me, and he who spoke with me had a golden measuring rod to measure the city and its gates and its wall. And the city lies four cornered, and its length is as great as its breadth. And he measured the city with the rod. 12,000 stadia, the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured its wall, 144 forearms, according to the measure of a man, that is, of a messenger. And the structure of its wall was jasper, and the city was clean gold like clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation, jasper, the second, sapphire, the third, agate, the fourth, emerald, the fifth, sardonyx, the sixth, ruby, the seventh, chrysolite, the eighth, beryl, the ninth, topaz, the tenth, chrysoprase, the eleventh, jacinth, and the twelfth, amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Each one of the gates was a single pearl. And the street of the city was clean gold like transparent glass. And I saw no dwelling place in it, for Yahweh El Shaddai is its dwelling place and the Lamb. And the city had no need or of the sun nor of the moon to shine in it, for the esteem of Elohim lightened it, and the Lamb is its lamp. And the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light, and the sovereigns of the earth bring their esteem into it. And there shall by no means enter into it whatever is unclean, neither any one doing abomination and falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Baruch Atah Yahweh, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Natan Lanu HaDavar HaEmet, Vechaye Olam Betukenu, Baruch Atah Yahweh, Noten HaTorah. I'm sorry. Notain Habrit Hadashah. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave to us the word of truth and planted life everlasting in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the renewed covenant. Amen. All right, it's just about time for tonight's drosh, but like always, we're going to take just a small break and get a check on our live streams real quick. And everything seems to be looking good. And as most of you know who have been watching the past couple of weeks, we are multi-streaming to four different platforms right now. We're streaming live to YouTube, Facebook, Odyssey, and Twitch. So if you prefer one over the other, you can always use your preferred one. And like always, if you would like links to any of these, you can check down in the description below. Or the best place to go is GodHonestTruth.com and go to our Connect Socially page. And also, like always, if you happen to miss something of tonight's service, or if you'd like to go back and rehear something, you can always view the on-demand video, and that's usually available starting sometime Shabbat morning or Saturday morning. So check back for that. And the best place to do that would be on our website, and you just click on the post for that live stream, and you'll not only get the video, but you'll also get the slides for the drosh as well. That way you can go through the slides at your own pace, stop at a particular one to take notes or research. It just makes it so much more convenient to that, like that. <coughs> so starting Shabbat morning, make sure to check out GodHonestTruth.com for that new post. Now, in the way of video, also be sure to go down below right now, leave us a comment, say hi, shalom, Shabbat shalom, just whatever have you. 
Or since tonight we're speaking, talking about speaking in tongues, tell us something in a foreign language. That would be kind of neat. I know there's people out there watching right now that speak more than one language. I speak mm, maybe one and a half, but we'll leave it for another day. But yeah, go down and leave us a comment down below. While you're down there, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. That way you're notified every time that we go live or upload a new on-demand video. Also hit that like button and hit the share button and share it around with your friends, families, coworkers, what have you. If you're watching this right now, odds are that someone else that you know in your circle would also enjoy this kind of content. So just go ahead and hit that share button and share it with them. So tonight, like we said, is going to be about speaking in tongues. So let's get that pulled up for you real quick. And there is an example of someone speaking in tongues, especially prevalent in like the charismatic Pentecostal churches. That's where you're normally find stuff like this. And we're going to be addressing that and what the Bible says, all of that. So stay tuned for that. With the wrong thing. There we go. Now, of course, when you think about speaking in tongues, you've probably heard this subject before, or at least you've read through it and you've noticed it when you're going through your Bible readings on a daily basis, right? But the most famous of speaking in tongues passages comes to us from Acts chapter 2. And it says here, And when the day of the festival of Shavuot, or some translations call it Pentecost, had come, they were all with one mind in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from the heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and settled on each one of them, and they were all filled with the set-apart spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them to speak. Now in Yerushalayim there were dwelling Yudim, dedicated men from every nation under the heaven. And when this sound came to be, the crowd came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to each other, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how do we hear each one in our own language in which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and those dwelling in Aram Naharim, both Judah and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, both Phrygia and Pamphylia, Mitzrayim and the parts of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Udim and converts, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues the great deeds of Elohim. Now, take some notice about what we just read here. This is the most famous passage about speaking in tongues that most people think of when they think about the subject of speaking in tongues. And a couple things to note or pick up on here is that these apostles who are gathered together there, some people say the upper room, but that's neither here nor there. They were gathered together. The Holy Spirit came down and gave them a gift of speaking in tongues, in speaking in foreign languages. So it was a gift from the Holy Spirit. And when they went out and started speaking, everyone in the crowd, even though People in the crowd were a mixed multitude from different areas, speaking different languages, etc., etc. These foreigner people heard them speaking in their language. They understood what they were saying, and they were all amazed. They did not know how it was that these poor farmers and carpenters and fishermen from Galilee could speak all these multiple languages. So they were speaking in other languages that were not their own and of which they had not learned beforehand. And people who heard it, heard the great deeds of Elohim, heard what was going on about Yahweh. Now, this is important too, because the gift of tongues was given to them for the spreading of the gospel of the word. And it was a great tool, a great benefit. But yeah, just take notice here that 
it was a gift from the Holy Spirit or the set apart spirit or the spirit of the Holy, whichever way you want to phrase it. And everyone heard them and understood the language they were speaking, depending on who they are and where they're from. Now, we know, <clears throat> I'm sorry, let me back up real quick. When the earth was created and their people began to multiply on the earth, whatnot, for a certain time, there was only one specific language. Genesis 11.1 1 tells us that. And it says, and all the earth had one language and one speech. So no matter where you went on earth, in the known earth or populated earth, you could speak to whoever you met and you would understand them. They would understand you because there was only one language at that time. However, there was a time when the hearts of men were not so good, not so righteous, and they started building a tower to the heavens to be like God or to be like the gods or whatever they had in their mind. But this caused Yahweh to come down and confuse their language. Genesis 11, 6 through 9. And Yahweh said, look, they are one people and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. And now they are not going to be withheld from doing whatever they plan to do. Come, let us go there and confuse their language so that they do not understand one another's speech. And Yahweh scattered them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. That is why its name was called Babel, because there Yahweh confused the language of all the earth, and from there Yahweh scattered them over the face of all the earth. Now we can see here, this is the beginning of where the different languages that we know of started out. <clears throat> there was one language up until a point and then Yahweh came down and confused all the languages and then we had multiple languages at that point. So that's the beginning of the differing languages that we have handed down to us nowadays. And there's other references to speaking in tongues and the Tanakh as well. In Isaiah 28, it says, For with a jabbering lip and a foreign tongue, he speaks to this people to whom he said, This is the rest, give rest to the weary, and this is the refreshing, but they would not hear. Now, of course, this is referenced in the Brit Hadashah as well and the book of 1 Corinthians. Chapter 14, 21 says, In the Torah it has been written, With men of other tongues and other lips, I shall speak to this people, and even so, they shall not hear me, says Yahweh. So even before Yeshua, and even before they were there in the upper room, it was already being talked about sometime in the future that people would speak in tongues for a way to Yahweh to get his message to the peoples all around the earth. But as we know, even from today's day and age, when we go out and try to talk to people or we you know, look at different ministries around the world, there are still some people who do not listen, who don't want to listen, who reject the gospel and reject the word of Yahweh. And this is foretold right here in Scripture. Now, of course, Yeshua himself even talks about people having the gift of speaking in tongues. Mark 16, And these signs shall accompany the ones who believe, in my name they shall cast out demons. They shall speak with renewed tongues, or new tongues, depending on which translation you're looking at. They shall take up snakes, and if they drink any deadly drink, it shall by no means hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall get well. So even Yeshua is talking about this thing, this gift of speaking in tongues, coming later in a future date. But even after Acts chapter 2, that most famous one that we just read, there are other instances of people speaking in tongues in the Brit Hadashah also. Acts 10, 44-46 While Kepha was still speaking these words, the set-apart spirit fell upon all those hearing the word, and those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many as came with Kepha, because the gift of the set-apart spirit had been poured out on the nations also, for they were hearing them speaking with tongues and extolling Elohim. So these other people were hearing them speak 
in their native language, whatever language it was that they knew. And it says here that they were extolling Elohim. So it was understandable, this people there, and was praising Elohim. Again, Acts 19, 5 through 6. And when they heard this, they were immersed into the name of the Master Yeshua. And when Shaul had laid hands on them, the set apart spirit came upon them, and they were speaking in tongues and prophesying. So again, another instance of the gift of speaking in tongues, and it was also combined with prophesying this time. Now, like we said, there's churches nowadays, especially the charismatic or Pentecostal churches, who do this speaking in tongues thing. And we just read about it in Scripture. But is it the same thing? Is what's happening now the same thing as what was happening back then? Well, let's examine that real quick. Here is another video clip for your pleasure. This is TV. Now, that's what a lot of people would refer to as speaking in tongues. Because if you go to a Pentecostal church or a charismatic church and they're speaking in tongues or what they call speaking in tongues, this is the kind of thing you will hear. However, this gift is talked about by Shaul when he writes to the Corinthians especially. Let's take a look at that real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 through 11. And to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for profiting. For to one is given a word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another a word of knowledge according to the same Spirit, and to another belief by the same Spirit, and to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit and to another operations of powers, and to another prophecy, and to another discerning of spirits, and to another kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these, distributing to each one individually as he intends. So a couple things to take away from this real quick. Is that, that not everyone gets the same gifts, right? These are all gifts of the Spirit of the Holy. But not everyone gets the same thing. Here we're, we see that some people get the gift of tongues, yes. But others get the gift of interpretation of those tongues. Other people get the gift of prophecy. Other people, you know, get the op gift of operations of powers, gift of healing, etc., cetera, etc., cetera but not everyone gets the same thing. Because we're all different members of the same body, remember? And Shaul goes on further explaining this. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 27 through 30. And you are a body of Messiah and members individually. And Elohim has appointed these in the assembly, firstly emissaries, secondly prophets, Thirdly, teachers, after that, miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, ministrations, kinds of tongues. Are all emissaries? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Now, of course, all of these questions are rhetorical in nature. The answer, obviously, to all these questions is no. Not all have the gift of speaking in tongues. Not all have the gift of working miracles. Not all are emissaries, etc., etc. Not all are interpretations or interpreters of tongues, right? And that's what his point is, that we are all part of the body, but we're each different members of that body. So we each have different gifts, and we're given different gifts. Maybe more than one, but we don't all have all the gifts, and we don't all have the same gift. That's the point here. So now looking at First Corinthians chapter, I'm sorry, yeah, chapter 14, verses 2 and 4 through 11. 
For he who is speaking in a tongue does not speak to men, but to Elohim. For no one understands, but in the Spirit he speaks secrets. He who is speaking in a tongue builds up himself, but he who is prophesying builds up the assembly. Now I wish you all spoke with tongues, but rather that you might prophesy. For he who is prophesying is greater than he who is speaking with tongues, unless he interprets, so that the assembly might receive upbuilding. But now, brothers, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you unless I speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge or by prophesying or by teaching? Nevertheless, lifeless instruments making a sound, whether flute or harp, if they do not make a distinction in the sound, how shall it be known what is played on the flute or on the harp? For indeed, if the trumpet makes an indistinct sound, who shall prepare himself for battle? So also you, if you do not give speech by the tongue that is clear, how shall it be known what is spoken? For you shall be speaking into the air. There are undoubtedly so many kinds of sounds in the world, and none of them is without distinct sound. If then I do not know the power of the voice, I shall be a foreigner to him who speaks, and he who speaks be a foreigner to me. Now, big thing to take away here is that it should be distinct and clear and speaking in a known language. The examples that we saw before, that we read before this, when they spoke in tongues, people understood them. Maybe not all, but there definitely were people who understood them somewhere in that crowd. And that's what Paul or Shaul is saying here also. Be distinct and make sure that people know what it is that you are saying when you are speaking in tongues. Otherwise, like it says here, he says that they'll be a foreigner to you and you'll be a foreigner to them because you're just blabbing gibberish, pretty much. It's like going to, be like me going to you know, China or Korea and listening to people speak Mandarin Chinese or Korean. I mean, yeah, I could recognize it as a language, but it would all be gibberish to me because I would not understand what they are saying. Going on in 1 Corinthians 14, 12 through 17. So also you, since you are ardent for spiritual gifts, seek to excel in the upbuilding of the assembly. Therefore, he was speaking in a tongue. Let him pray that he might interpret. For if I am praying in a tongue, my spirit is praying, but my understanding is without fruit. What then is it? I shall pray with the Spirit, and I shall also pray with the understanding. I shall sing with the Spirit, and I shall also sing with the understanding. Otherwise, if you bless with the Spirit, how shall he who fills up the place of the unlearned say, Amen, at your giving of thanks, since he does not know what you say? For you truly give thanks well, but the other is not built up. So you can go on speaking in tongues, whether it actually be the gift of the Holy Spirit or not, it could just be your own out of your own volition, right? But if it's not for the uplifting and upbuilding of the church, it's doing no good. You can call it praise all you want, and right here at the end, he says, for you truly give thanks well, but the other is not built up. He's saying that you may call it giving thanks, you may call it praise, but no one's understanding. No one is getting anything from it. So no one is being built up. Once again, the gift of speaking in tongues is speaking in an actual known language that actually exists and that other people somewhere, someplace can understand. That's all the examples we read, right? that follows and lines up exactly what Scripture shows us and tells us. Going on, 1 Corinthians 14, 18 through 19. I thank my Elohim, I speak with tongues more than you all, but in an assembly, I wish to speak five words with my understanding that I might instruct others also than 10,000 words in a tongue. So, this is pretty much going along the same lines of what we've already read. It's better to be understood than to speak in tongues and not be understood. Because when you speak in tongues and no one understands you, 
It's a waste of time. It wastes your time speaking in tongues. It wastes everyone else's time who is listening to you. It's for naught. And here, Shaul or Paul is saying exactly this. They would rather speak five words that can be understood than 10,000 in a language or a tongue that is not understood. Going on, 1 Corinthians 14, 21 through 23. In the Torah, it has been written, With men of other tongues and other lips, I shall speak to this people. And even so, they shall not hear me, says Yahweh. So then, tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. And prophesying is not for unbelievers, but for those who believe. If then, all the assembly comes together in one place, and all speak with tongues, and there come in those who are unlearned or unbelievers, shall they not say that you are mad? So here is a good point also. Saying here, Shaul tells us that tongues are for a sign and for those who do not believe, the unbelievers, not for believers. Now, if you go to a congregation, to a church, and you're all speaking in tongues, well, pretty much everyone there is a believer already, so it's not for them. So why are you doing it? And he's saying here that if everyone there is speaking in tongues at this church and whatnot, and unbelievers come in and they hear this, they're going to think you're crazy, that it's madness. So why do it? Go out into the world, and if you are given the gift of tongues, you will be able to speak in a language that other people can hear and understand, and that's for the spreading of the gospel, the spreading of the word of Yahweh, for the upbuilding of the church. 1 Corinthians 14, 26 through 28. What then is it, brothers? Whenever you come together, each one has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all be done for upbuilding. If anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two or at the most three, each in turn, and let one interpret. And if there is no interpreter, let him be silent in an assembly and let him speak to himself and to Elohim. So, here it's saying, let the speaking of the tongues be for the purpose of upbuilding, right? It says, all of you, you know, when you come together, you have these different gifts, you want to teach, you want to speak in tongues, you want to give a revelation or prophesy. But he's saying, let all of these things be done for the upbuilding of the assembly. He's also saying that when you speak in tongues or when someone else speaks in tongues, make sure there are interpreters there. That is as we can see, is going to be a requirement for speaking in tongues. And if there is no interpreter, if no one's interpreting it for you, therefore no one's understanding you, at that point, Shaul or Paul is saying, sit down, be quiet, and just speak with yourself and pray to Elohim, right? Yeah, let him speak to himself and to Elohim. So, no interpreter, be silent. So, after going over all these scriptures and seeing what speaking in tongues is all about, and plus the various guidelines that we've seen here, what are some things that we can learn from all this? Well, number one, the tongue that is being spoken, or the language that's actually being spoken, is a language that someone or somewhere can understand here on planet Earth. Right? That's all the examples we saw in Scripture, that when they spoke in tongues in a foreign language, it was an actual real language that other people that were there understood. We also learned that there must be an interpreter when this happens, right? We just read that. There's no interpreter. Be silent. We learned that the gift of tongues, along with other things, are for the upbuilding of the church that the gift of tongues is for the benefit of unbelievers, not believers. And if there's no interpreter, then be quiet. All right? So we know these things about the gift of speaking in tongues. So once again, 
let's look, let's look at some more modern day examples of people speaking in tongues and see if it lines up with the things that we have just learned straight out of scripture. First up is going to be Kenneth Copeland. Shigamo. Tevre ma ombo brave dis to cinema hantet ke. In ge und uet ge nando zdog sisik pukukla na membre menesto. Stellogla hamalana le lo lendile engren in stelets karatak. So what are some things you noticed here? Number one, he wasn't speaking an actual language. His mouth was moving. There were sounds coming out of it. But it wasn't an actual language. Number two, there's no interpreter there. So no one understands what he's saying. And no one understands it because he's not speaking an actual language. It's actually just gibberish. And this is so common with a lot of these charismatic or Pentecostal speaking in tongues things. It's not what lines up with scripture. There's no interpreter. It's not an actual language, etc., etc. And if you'll also notice that there's a lot of people that buy into this and it seems or it makes them feel like whoever's doing this, you know, is powerful, has been given a great gift. But if you'll notice, these things, or these videos that we've just seen, with the uh, first pastor we saw at the beginning of the drosh, speaking in tongues, he was in his church doing this. T.D. Jakes was in his church doing this. Kenneth Copeland, as we see here, is in his church doing this. He's doing this in front of the believers, not the unbelievers. And scripture says that speaking of tongues is for the benefit of the unbelievers, not the believers. It's for the uplifting and upbuilding of the church, not the uplifting and upbuilding of the person doing it. So it kind of makes you wonder exactly why they are doing this. If it doesn't line up with scripture, if it's not an actual language, then why are they doing it? Kind of makes you think, right? Here's another example. This is going to be Benny Hinn. Most of you have probably heard of Benny Hinn, maybe seen some of his services. But once again, when you see whatever Billy Hinn does when these speaking in tongues, it's the same thing that we just went over with Kenneth Copeland. It's gibberish. It's not an actual language. There's no interpreter. No one's understanding it. No one knows what it is he's saying. So what they're doing is not scriptural. It's just all false. It's, well, like I said, gibberish it causes chaos and disorder. Sometimes unknown. And as we all know, we read that scripture in 1 Corinthians 14, 33, where Elohim is not Elohim of disorder, but of peace, as in all the assemblies of the set-apart ones. Some translations it says, for God is not the author of confusion. Right? And it doesn't make any sense what these guys are doing. And women, too. You can find plenty of women and women pastors, etc., on YouTube speaking in tongues just like this, but it's not actually speaking in tongues, it's just blabbing and gibberish like we've seen here today. That is confusing. That is disorder. And God is not the God of confusion. Elohim is not Elohim of disorder. That's scriptural. So let's dig into some more meat real quick. Some more information to help you understand this subject from a broader perspective. When we look in the Brit Hadashah, in the Greek text, the word used here for tongues, meaning languages, is the word glossa, Strong's G1100. Strong's calls it the tongue, literally the actual tongue, or by implication, a language. And all the texts we wrote, or I'm sorry, all the texts that we read were 
speaking about languages, not physical tongues in your mouth. Thayer's Greek lexicon says pretty much the same thing. It says the actual tongue or the language or dialect used by particular people distinct from that of other nations. Language or dialect used by a particular people. Now, what we've heard T.D. Jakes, Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn, and that first pastor doing wasn't a language used by anyone. They were just making it all up. However, there is a term for what they're doing also. Now, remember this word right here, glossa, okay? It's going to be very important coming right up. The next term we're going to look at is glossolalia. Now, this is different, right? It may come from the word glossa, but it's different. It's glossolalia. And Merriam-Webster says that glossolalia is ecstatic, typically unintelligible utterance occurring especially in a moment of religious excitation, right? That's what these pastors we've seen were just doing. They weren't doing the biblical glossa. They were doing glossolalia, unintelligible utterance. Goes on, Cyclopedia Britannica says, glossolalia, also called speaking in tongues, utterances approximating words and speech, usually produced during states of intense religious experience. The vocal organs of the speaker are affected, the tongue moves, in many cases without the conscious control of the speaker, and generally unintelligible speech pours forth. Glossolalia occurred among adherents of various ancient religions, including some of the ancient Greek religions. Hmm, interesting, huh? So the speaking in tongues that's done today is not what was happening back in the New Testament or the Brit Hadashah. It's different. It's called glossolalia. And we can see here that this gibberish, this unintelligible utterance, as Merriam-Webster called it, was being done by pagans even before New Testament times, which is very, very interesting. Now, speaking of pagan things and remembering Benny Hinn, look at this real quick. Now, at first, you might think this is a Benny Hinn service, right? A charismatic Pentecostal service, but it's not. This is actually what's called, um, referred to as Kundalini Yoga, right? But very, very similar actions and ways of going about it like you find at a Benny Hinn service. I mean, this is pretty much just a Benny Hinn service with yoga mats. And I'm not just particularly picking on Benny Hinn. That's most of the videos I watched during the research up to this, making this drosh. But you see people flailing around for no reason. And we don't get that from scripture. Now, these people also in this kundalini yoga have been known to utter things that they call or might be called a language, glossolalia, but it's not an actual language. I mean, this is paganism. This is Hindu stuff, paganism. And they were doing this long before the charismatic church and stuff. Other pagans were doing it as well. However, in contrast to glossolalia, we have another modern term I'd like to show you. And that is called xenolalia or xenoglossy. According to Wikipedia, xenoglossy, also written xenoglossia, and sometimes also known as xenolalia, is the supposedly paranormal phenomenon in which a person is able to speak, write, or understand an unlearned language they could not have acquired by natural means. Now, this is what we read about in scripture, right? an actual intelligible language spoken by someone who has not learned it. It's like me waking up one day and speaking Korean. I haven't learned Korean, 
but by suddenly start speaking Korean, then, you know, that would be evidence of xenoglossy or speaking of tongues, the gift of Holy Spirit. That would be what we find in Scripture. Again, encyclopedia.com. Xenoglossy, speaking in a language unknown to the speaker in the normal waking state. Wiktionary.org. Xenoglossy, knowledge of a language one has never learned. And again, we go back, we look at the examples we find in Scripture. This is what we find in Scripture. People speaking actual languages they haven't learned. But not what we see in charismatic churches where they're just blabbering gibberish, where there's no interpreter, it's not an actual language, no one's understanding it. That's not scriptural. But if you suddenly start speaking an actual language that people know, that is speaking in tongues. That's the scriptural speaking in tongues. Now, think it back to when we first started the drosh and we were talking about that famous passage. Let's look at that one more time real quick. Acts 2, 3 through 4. And there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and settled on each one of them. And they were all filled with the set-apart spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the, as the spirit gave them to speak. Notice this fire part right here, because this is, gets very, very interesting. And now look at some of the fragments that they found at Qumran. The Dead Sea Scrolls, 1Q29F.1. The stone, just as the Lord commanded, and your Urim, and it the cloud, shall come forth with him with the tongues of fire. The left hand stone, which is on its left side, shall be uncovered before the whole congregation until the priest finishes speaking and after the cloud has been lifted. And you shall keep the prophet has spoken to you who counsels rebellion, the Lord your God. Notice that. Tongues of fire. And this is way before, or at least I think it was way before, the apostles in Acts chapter 2. Again, another fragment, 1Q29F.2. The right-hand stone, when the priest comes out of three tongues of fire from the right-hand stone from a and after he goes up, he shall draw near to the people. Again, talking about the high priest and tongues of fire. Interesting. This sounds kind of jumbled up, and it is. There's only fragments of this scroll that they've come about, so parts of the sentences are missing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is the parts they've been able to recover and translate. Again, 4Q376, call 2. And your Urim and it the cloud shall come forth with him with tongues of fire. Again, tongues of fire. The left hand stone which is upon its left side shall be uncovered before the whole congregation until the priest finishes speaking and after the cloud has been lifted and you shall keep it and the prophet has spoken to you. Kind of interesting, right? Talking about tongues of fire. They read about <clears throat> the Holy Spirit and gifts of the tongues of fire sort of coming down on them like pillars of fire. In Acts chapter 2. Very, very interesting stuff. But, not going to get into that too much today. Just, to su just suffice it to say here that these fragments are most likely describing um, Yom Kippurim, the highest time of the year when the high priest, back during the day, was allowed to go into the Holy of Holies. <clears throat> and these fragments here that we just read are talking about when the high priest comes back out of the Holy of Holies. Now, there's not going to get into much detail on this because there's a lot more studying research that needs to go into this before we do, but just brought it up for your viewing and listening pleasure. Hope you found that as interesting as I did. However, when we get back to talking about speaking in tongues, you got to think about, is it required? I mean, think about that. After everything we've read and go through, would we expect it to be a requirement for salvation, to be a believer? Well, let's think about this. Think about everything we've already read. 
Now, look at what the Assemblies of God says in one of their statements of faith. I'm sorry, in their statements of fundamental truths on their website. And they said in number eight, the initial physical evidence of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The baptism of believers in the Holy Spirit is witnessed by the initial physical sign of speaking with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives them utterance. Now, this is pretty watered down to what some people actually believe and say. Some people actually believe and tell others that if you're not speaking in tongues, then you're not actually saved because that would be the evidence of your salvation. Now, again, think about all we've read. Does that make any sense? No. I mean, let's review this real quick. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11. And to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for profiting, for to one is given a word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another a word of knowledge according to the same Spirit, and to another belief by the same Spirit, and to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, and to another operations of powers, and to another prophecy, and to another discerning of spirits, and to another kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of the tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these, distributing to each one individually as he intends. So no, it cannot be required for salvation as Scripture itself tells us that not everyone gets the same gift. Not everyone gets the gift of speaking in tongues. So no, it is not required that you speak in tongues. It is a gift for some. From the Spirit of the Holy. It is a gift for and it is not given to everyone. Other people get different gifts and may not get the gift of speaking in tongues. And if you don't have the gift of speaking in tongues, don't try to force it. <clears throat> Otherwise, it all comes out just like the videos that we just previously watched. It all comes out as gibberish and unintelligible. Right? I mean, this clip comes from a comedy movie, but it's pretty much along the same lines of the actual preachers we just watched and listened to. And speaking of those previous pre previous preachers, Let's let Benny Hinn wrap it up real quick about all this gibberish. You may not understand this. I don't either. Yeah, I don't understand it either. Didn't understand a single word they said back then. And that's part of the point we're making tonight. <clears throat> if it can't be understood, it's worthless. Be silent. There's no interpreter. Sit down. Shut up. So, just to wrap it all up real quick, speaking in tongues is like speaking or say, telling an inside joke or using terminology that's only used by a small few. Right? You tell an inside joke, only a certain people are going to get it, but people who aren't in on the joke aren't going to understand it or get it. Right? I mean, we've all done that before. And there are certain people in certain groups who use certain terminology that other people outside those groups won't understand. For instance, I was in the Marine Corps and we had a certain set of phrases and words that we used that we understood because we were in the Marine Corps, but other people would have a hard time knowing what we were talking about. For instance, if I said I was going on fire watch, okay, does that mean we're going to go build a fire somewhere and watch it? No. Firewatch pretty much just means guard duty. <clears throat> go out and be alert and keep an eye on things. And you do that for a certain shift, you know, a certain amount of time. That's your firewatch. If I said we that tomorrow was field day, what does that mean? I mean, like the schools that they have rides and bounce houses and water sports. 
No, not in the Marine Corps. No, field day usually is Thursday of every week. That's when you go and you clean your barracks room. And the reason you do that is because they're coming by to inspect it on Friday. But field day means the day you clean top to bottom everywhere. That's field day. <clears throat> if I said I was going to the head, okay, the head of what? The head of the ship? No, because I've never set foot on a ship. The head of the airplane? No. Going to the head means going to the bathroom, the restroom. That's just another term that's used in the Marine Corps, also the Navy. <clears throat> bulkhead. What's a bulkhead? Right? Well, bulkhead is actually just a wall. That's all a bulkhead is. It could be the wall of a ship, inside of a ship. It could be the wall in a building. It could be a wall in your house. It's all referred to as a bulkhead. Tour. You say we're going on a tour. That doesn't mean we're going on an African safari tour. That doesn't mean we're going on a tour with some famous band. No. Tour is something like I did going out into the actual world off base to, I'm sorry, I didn't go to Afghanistan. I went to Iraq. That is the tour I had. Right? So we're going out on tour. K bar. It's not chocolate candy bar filled with peanuts. No. K bar is a Marine Corps fighting knife. That's what a K bar is. There's also the term pogue. What's a pogue? What is pogue? How do you do pogue? Well, pogue actually means person other than grunt, right? In the Marine Corps, this is unofficial, <clears throat> but you have grunts and you have people who aren't grunts. And they're referred to as pogues, people other than grunts. I was a poke. I was not a grunt. But these are all terms that you wouldn't know unless you were in the Marine Corps. And just like telling an inside joke, you wouldn't know it unless you were in on the joke. But they're all actual real-life examples. And they actually exist. Just like the gift of speaking in tongues. If you actually get the gift of speaking in tongues, you will speak in an actual real-world language that someone somewhere is going to understand. Otherwise, it's just gibberish. So, in summary, up until the Tower of Babel, there was only one language for everyone that lived at that time. However, at the Tower of Babel, when everyone was scattered all over the place, that's when the beginning of differing languages came about. Now, of course, they've changed through time. Others have been added, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But that is the point in history when different languages started occurring. Speaking in an unknown tongue is a gift from the Spirit of the Holy. It's not something you force not something you create yourself. It's a gift to you. Not everyone will get the gift of speaking in tongues. As we saw from Paul, some get the speaking of tongues. Some get the interpretation of tongues. Some get the gift of prophecy. Some get the gift of healing, etc., etc. But not everyone will get the gift of speaking in tongues. When someone speaks in tongues, and it's actual gift of the Holy Spirit. They will speak in an actual language, one that exists, one that is real, and one that someone somewhere understands. Speaking in tongues is for the upbuilding of the assembly or church. Speaking in tongues is for unbelievers, not believers. It's not for believers in a megachurch. It's for unbelievers. 
Paul also tells us that it's better to be understood than to speak in tongues. He said he'd rather speak five words that could be understood than 10,000 words in a tongue that no one understands. So it's better to be understood than speak in tongues. If no one understands you, there's no interpreter there. It's all for nothing. It's all just gibberish. Oh, just covered that. But speaking in tongues is for the benefit of unbelievers, not believers. Not for the TV camera crew, not for the believers sitting there in the mega church. It's for the unbelievers. And as we also clearly saw, when speaking in tongues, interpreters are required to interpret what it is that you're saying when you're speaking in tongues. If there's no interpreter, be quiet, be silent, shut up. And that's just the God honest truth. Thank you for joining us tonight. We hope, sincerely hope, that you learned something. Uh, if you have any more questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to us. That's team at godhonesttruth.com or through any of our many social media profiles. For all those links, you can go to godhonesttruth.com, go to the Our Ministry menu, and click on Connect Socially. In just a moment, we're going to be doing the Aaronic Benediction. So if you're watching at home and you would like to have those living with you, gathered around you when we do that, then go ahead and start gathering them. But once again, we'd like for you to go down below in the comment section and just leave us a comment real quick saying hi, saying Shabbat Shalom, whatever have you. If you'd like to leave us a message in a foreign language, hey, do that as well. We'd just love to hear from you. And as always, make sure to hit that subscribe button down there and hit the bell icon so that you're notified every time that we go live or upload a new video. Be sure to hit that like button and hit the share button because as always, word of mouth advertising is the best kind of advertising anyone can have. And every single time you do that, we really do appreciate it because it's getting the word out there about God honest truth and we can see the growth over time and we really do appreciate all that. So, with all that being said, let's go ahead and do our Aaronic benediction. Yivarika Yahweh, Vayishmarecha, Yair Yahweh Panavilecha, Vihunecha. Yisah Yahweh, Panav Elecha, V'yasim Lecha, Shalom. May Yahweh bless you and guard you. May Yahweh make His face shed light upon you, and be gracious unto you. May Yahweh lift up His face unto you, and give you peace. Thank you once again for joining us tonight for another edition of God Honest Truth Livestream. We hope that tomorrow, or actually now, today, you have a great and restful Shabbat. We hope that your upcoming week until we meet next time is filled with good food, good friends, good fortunes, good health, good spirits. And until we meet again next time, be sure to take care of yourself, take care of each other. Shavua Tov and Shabbat Shalom. Yaakov, Lechuvan Elchad, Ba'or, Be'i Yaakov, Lechuvan Elchad.